So let us continue to topic 2.6 about intersection control design, signalized and unsignalized intersection. And let us look into the first one, signalized intersection using Webster method. Webster is the name of the person who create this method of traffic signal design. Okay, so let us look into the definition of traffic signal control system. Uh, basically, the traffic signal control system includes all mechanical or electrical features. It's a combination of mechanical and electricals. Control devices used to control, direct or warn driver or pedestrian. Basically, it is a computerized system and the timing setting for each cycle was uh, set earlier from the design and calculation. So, the objective of this traffic signal system is first to provide right of way, hot line one, to vehicles on each approach to increase traffic handling performance. Second, to provide efficient traffic movement and also to ensure safety of the road user. And the last one, to reduce traffic conflict point, traffic delay, etc. So, uh, talking about traffic conflicts point, Conflict point at a junction are the point at which there are possibilities of two or more vehicles will collide if vehicles from opposing direction are allowed to move simultaneously. Maksudnya macam ni, bila dekat intersection tu, uh, kenderaan bergerak serentak. Kenderaan bergerak serentak dan diorang bertembung, berdebung, accident. Okay, contoh, let's say this example, it is a cross junction cross junction for leg intersections. Okay, let's assume the red color is from minor road and the green color from major road, so which all movement from major road has their own right of way, except for the right turning, because right turning could conflict with the vehicle from the opposite direction who want to go through. Here, it will collide here and collide here. If vehicles who want to make a right turn and go through, who want to make a right turn and go through, move simultaneously, then collision would occur. Okay, so with the traffic signal system, we can reduce these types of conflicts. So basically, uh, the traffic signal control system has several this um, what we call as advantage. Right, the first one, to provide for the progressive flow of a platoon of traffic along a given route. So, platoon of traffic is a group of vehicles. So, the vehicle could move simultaneously. Banyak-banyak bergerak. Okay, a group of vehicle. Second, the traffic signal also could interrupt heavy traffic at intervals to allow pedestrian and cross streets traffic, especially from the minor road, to cross or to enter the main street flow. It also could increase the traffic handling ability of a junction, which also increase the level of service of the junction and reduce number of conflicts. That is, to reduce frequency of occurrence of certain types of accident, especially the angle, angular type, okay, angle types of accident. Right. But, traffic signal also has several disadvantages. So, the first one, due to the improper design or unwarranted signal installation could cause excessive delay for motorists and pedestrians, particularly during off-peak periods. This is critical for the fixed time traffic control system. Maksudnya, they are fixed regardless of the number of vehicle, regardless of the peak or off-peak periods, the time is fixed. So, maksudnya dia akan menyebabkan delay lah. Lari-lari tengah malam. Katalah, uh, for example, uh, yang traffic light 199, ingat tak? Dekat stadium tu. Katakanlah itu adalah fixed time. So, during off-peak period, contoh pukul 2 pagi awak tunggu kat situ, 199 saat lah kena tunggu. Okay? So, that is the disadvantage of fixed time traffic signal. Second, Actually, the traffic signal could increase accident frequency 
that is rear end collision yang langgar belakang sebab apa tau this is because of the conflicts between vehicles between drivers who want to speed up or stop during the amber period waktu kuning katalah ada dua uh, yang depan ni dia teragak-agak dia hesitate nak proceed ke nak stop katakanlah dia stop dan yang belakang beria-ia ingatkan yang depan tu nak pergi dia pun tekan perpeng langgar belakang kereta yang depan. So that is rear end collision. So these types of accident always occur at traffic signal. Sebab ada conflicts between drivers. Okay. Then um, this regard of signal indication especially during off peak hour. So yang ni, ni lah red runner. We call it as a red runner. Macam bila dah malam ke ataupun waktu off peak period lampu tu merah tapi dia tetap langgar. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, a list of disadvantages of traffic signal. Okay, so this is how we select the types of junction. We can't just simply say that, okay, kita nak buat traffic signal kat sini, okay, kita nak buat roundabout kat sana, eh, okay lah, kita buat inter interchange lah, uh, baru kita feel feel ala ala highway sikit kat depan rumah kan. Tak boleh, cu os, tak boleh. Okay, so in order to select the types of junction, it's strongly related or rely on the number of vehicles, total two-way traffic on major road, and highest volume on minor road, and the unit is vehicle per hour. Okay, so for, for example here, types of junction, we have stop control, maksudnya ada stop line sahaja, we have traffic signal, interchange, and also roundabout. So let's say, the number of traffic is between 1,000 to 2,000. It is okay just install stop control. Letak line je. Lepas tu letaklah signboard berhenti. Ataupun beri laluan, give way. Okay. Or else, okay, you can put a roundabout by mini or small. Okay. Mini or small types of roundabout. But... If the number of traffic range between 1,000 up to 6,000, ni dalam 5,000 ke 6,000, then only you can install a traffic signal. Okay, for the interchange ni a bit special, sebab interchange ni hanya dekat highway lah, ataupun expressway, freeway, kan, motorways. Okay, that is for the interchange. Mm, and the size of the roundabout, it depends on the number of traffic. Contoh ya, eh, tengok mini up to 1000 then you can install a small roundabout if the traffic between 1000 to 2000 but if more than 2000 up to 5000 then you can just install the conventional roundabout macam dekat sya'alam banyak but then if the number of traffic is very um, numerous banyak kan then you can combine the roundabout and traffic signal macam kat bulatan tayangan tu sya'alam kan so, to select uh, the types of junction, you have to know the number of traffic for the intersection. Okay? Right. So, um, but in order for you to install traffic signal, you have to satisfy one of the three warren. Okay, ada tiga warren yang kena dipenuhi. Right. The first Warren is vehicle operations. Second warren is pedestrian safety. We want to ensure the safety of the pedestrian. And the third warren is based on the accident record. So, installation of traffic signal is warranted if one or more requirements specified in any of the warren are satisfied. Maksudnya, out of three warren, kalau dia penuhi satu, then you can install the traffic signal. Kalau tiga-tiga tak memenuhi dan tak payahlah buat traffic signal. Membazir je. Okay? Alright. Um, this one, this warrant you can refer to arahan teknik jalan 13th Road 87. Okay? So, let us look into the warrant number one about vehicular operation. So, for the vehicular operation, there are three criteria. First, Total volume in passenger car unit. Okay, bear in mind, for the traffic signal, we always want to convert the number of traffic into passenger car unit. Because the passenger car unit, then we can estimate the time needed 
for each cycle. Okay, cakap pasal cycle, nanti saya explain nak pergi to cycle eh. Buat bertenang, bertenang. Okay, so for the total volume passenger car unit is the traffic volume for each of any 8 hours of an average day meet the minimum requirement in table 1. So, where is the table 1? This is the table 1. Okay, before that, I want to explain this one. Number of lane on each approach. We have major road, we have minor road. Intersection mesti ada minor road. Either T junction ataupun cross junction. Kalau T junction ada satu je lah, minor road. Kalau cross junction maksudnya dia ada four leg tu, so ada dua minor road. Okay, so this is the number of lane in major road, number of lane in minor road. So depends berapa lane. Okay, then number of traffic minimum on major road. A, ada kurungan 1. Dan minimum on minor road. A, ada kurungan 2. Okay, tak apa. Saya explain kejap lagi. And it based on the location. Urban or rural. Urban or rural. Okay, apa maksud 1 dengan 2 ni? 1 is total volume of both approaches. So, for major road, you have to sum up the number of traffic from both approach. Maksudnya, 2-2 arah. Kena tambah semua. And, for minor road, ada dua ni kan? Dua ni maksudnya higher volume approach only. So, let's say you have two lanes for minor roads. So, ambil yang paling tinggi. Sebab dia nak higher volume approach only. Okay? So, then kira lah. Uh, tengok je table ni. Hmm. Then, kalau dia meet the requirement, meet the minimum requirement for the total volume PCU, then okay to install traffic signal. Second is peak hour volume. Okay, peak hour volume. If you look at here, there are three colors. Red, this one is purple and also white. So, for the red color, it indicate one lane on all approaches. Purple color indicate two or more lanes on one road, one on the other. Maksudnya, uh, satu tu mungkin dua lane, satu lagi tu satu lane je. And for the white color here, indicates two or more lanes on all approaches. Maksudnya, semua tu lebih daripada dua lane. So, tengoklah contoh eh. Mm, still again here, major road total on both approaches, vehicle per hour. And also for minor road, highest volume on one of the approaches only. Okay, contoh lah eh, contoh. Kita ambil yang paling simple. One lane on all approaches. Kita refer to red color. Katalah, the total on both approaches, vehicle per hour is 1,000. So, kita pergi kat 1,000 here. And, let's say, uh, the number of uh, vehicle on the minor road is 250. Okay. So, 1,000 kat major road kat sini. 250 kat sini on minor road. So, kita buat line, straight line. Cross kan. So, the cross is kat tengah-tengah ni. It exceed. The red line. Maksudnya apa? Maksudnya kita boleh install traffic signal. Okay. Kalau dia di bawah. Di bawah daripada line. So, maksudnya kita tak perlu install traffic signal. Same goes to the other types of uh, intersection. Okay. Kalau dia exit the line. Contoh exit the purple line. Exit the white line. So, maksudnya dia meet the peak hour volume. Okay. This is for urban or low speed road. Same goes to the other graph. But this one is for rural or high speed road. Okay. So, dia macam ni. Kalau dekat rural je, speed dia lebih tinggi. Kalau dekat urban, speed dia lebih rendah because of the number of traffic. Okay. Faham eh? So, yang ni pun sama lah. Contohlah major road 1000. Dan uh, jalan kita refer to one lane on all approaches as well. Yang warna merah ni. Dan 1000 dengan 200 setengah. Katalah 200 setengah, oh kat sini. Uh, maksudnya... Jalan dekat rural or high speed road ni need the traffic signal. So, this is how to read this graph. Okay, tak payah hafal as long as you know. Okay, so the third under vehicular operation is progressive movement. Progressive movement ni apa pula? Progressive movement is pattern of vehicle. Kita nak a group of vehicle moves, move simultaneously. So, it could increase the level of service as well. 
So it's applied in situation where it is desirable to install a signal to maintain a proper grouping or platooning of vehicles and regulate group speed even though the junction does not satisfy other warrant for signalization. Maksudnya, dia tak meet pun requirement A dengan B tadi. Dia tak meet pun warrant number 2 and warrant number 3 about uh, pedestrian safety and accident record. Dia tak meet semua. Okay, dia tak meet. Semuanya dia tak meet. So, tapi kita nak a group of vehicle move smoothly. Then, okay, you can install the traffic signal. Okay, so let us look into warrant number two about pedestrian safety. Okay, this is very critical, especially in school area because we want to ensure the safety of the school children. So, kita kena letak uh, traffic signal. But it depends on the number of pedestrian. So, minimum traffic volume for each of any eight hours of an average day. A, Total traffic on major road greater or equal than 600 vehicle per hour or where there is a race median island, maksudnya ada divisional island, 1.2 meter or more in width, 1,000 or more vehicle per hour and 150 or more pedestrian per hour crossing the road. So, if they meet these two requirements, then you can install the traffic signal okay or else you can just install the zebra crossing for pedestrian okay warrant number three is about accident record okay this is quite interesting i would say maksudnya tapi okay kita kena dapatkan data for several years sebelumnya okay so the requirement for signalization are satisfied when it is based on at least a period of three years. If there exists a record of five or more accidents in a year. Maksudnya kat junction tu, ada sekurang-kurangnya lima kemalangan. Nah, tak kisahlah kemalangan yang macam mana. But then, the accident should be of types of susceptible to correction or to correct by traffic signal control. So, this is more on um, ni, angular, angular accident. Dia langgar tepi, side, side swipe ke. There exists a volume of vehicular and pedestrian traffic not less than 80% of the requirements specified in warrant 1 and 2. Maksudnya, dia tak meet tau requirement number 1 and 2, warrant number 1 and warrant number 2. But then, it reached the 80%. So, we can install the traffic signal because the number of uh, traffic during peak hour or daily hour meet the 80%. The signal installation will not seriously disrupt progressive traffic flows. Maksudnya, uh, traffic signal tu tak mengganggu lah. Then, okay to install traffic signal. And other methods found not effective to reduce accident. So, ni normally at very critical unsignalized intersection. Maksudnya, kena letak juga traffic signal. Kalau tak, ya Rabbi, ya Salam, banyak betul kemalangan. Okay? So, ada note sikit kat sini, traffic signal installed for this warrant should be semi-vehicle actuated installed at a junction within a coordinated system or fully vehicle actuated if installed at an isolated junction. Uh, fully actuated ni maksudnya dia 100% pakai sensor. Kalau isolated junction, maksudnya dia tak link dengan junction yang lain. Okay, sebab apa tau? Sebab for the accident record ni, dia ada macam kelonggaran sedikit untuk install traffic signal. Because kita kata sebab accident. Kita tak ada cara dah nak selamatkan uh, pengguna jalan raya unless we install the traffic signal. Okay. So, that's all about the theory of traffic signal. So, basically, uh, it has three warrants that you need to comply if you want to install the traffic signal. So, again, I recall uh, warrant number one is about vehicle operation, which you need to know the total volumes in passenger car per hour. You need to refer to the table. Then, what is the number of peak hour volume based on the location? rural or urban area, then if uh, you want to promote 
uh, or maintain a proper grouping of platinum of vehicles, then you also can install under warrant number one. It's about vehicular operation. Second warrant is about pedestrian safety, which you need to comply the number of traffic and also the number of pedestrian. And this is the warrant number three about accident record. So simple. Simple, mudah, pimple, jerawat. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, can. So, if okay, then we continue to the next video. Assalamualaikum. See you.